Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on a Civil War Research Trail. I've spent the last few days researching this Brigadier General, Rufus Saxton. Towards the end of his life and the latter part of the 19th century, in an interview with a newspaper reporter, he made reference to his memoirs that he was working on. I don't find any evidence that he completed them before his death in 1908. And it's a real shame because his career is rather impressive. From his graduation from West Point in 1849 to his service in the West on various surveys to his Civil War assignments, including Camp Jackson in St. Louis in 1861, Harper's Ferry in 1862, where his successful defense resulted in him receiving the Medal of Honor to the military governorship of the Department of the South and all of his work involved in helping freedmen and establishing regiments of colored soldiers for the U Union Army. Really a wealth of information and a wealth of fascinating experiences. In addition to that, because of his West Point connections and his varied postings, he came to know almost all of the major generals and political figures in the North and the South. The generals that he knew is particular interest, particularly interesting because towards the end of his life, when he gave that interview, he talked about what he thought made the best soldier. And I want to read this passage from the interview because I think it speaks a lot to the experience that he had during his Civil War career and elsewhere with the Army and also the people he knew. So let me read this to you. I think you'll find it quite interesting. He says, quote, The qualities that go to the making of a successful soldier are various, but... One thing is imperative. He must absolutely suppress his feelings as to suffering or the cost of war. Grant, Ulysses says Grant, was able to do this and deemed no sacrifice too great to win victory for his country. McClellan was too tenderhearted and it cost him dear. Now, he goes on to talk about his own experience and when he had that moment where he was able to get beside himself and think of the greater good. And this part of his interview relates to Port Royal in November of 1861, part of a large expedition that wound up with successful amphibious operations against Port Royal, establishing a beachhead in South Carolina and laying the groundwork for a major Union base from which to operate against Charleston and other parts of the coast. So here's Rufus Saxton's personal experience that gives us an opportunity to learn why he was able to reveal the key quality that he did. He says, I remember once when my heart failed. It was at Port Royal. We were in camp there and were constantly exposed to a galling fire from a Confederate man of war. One night, a shell landed right by the side of my tent, penetrated the ground for some feet, and then exploded, blowing me out of bed. The shock was terrific, and I did not recover from it for a long time. I thought it was about time to stop that sort of work, and I spoke to a young officer under me, asking him if he were willing to try and reach the ship with a torpedo. He at once expressed his willingness, and I told him to get his men together and lay his plans. He got a boat and had his torpedo all fixed, and I went down to the landing with him. He shook hands with me in saying farewell. I knew that he was going to a certain death. I revoked the order and forbade him to go. So it was in that moment that Saxton had his own experience, realizing that perhaps there was bigger, bigger parts of 
the army bigger parts of victory to think about rather than his own personal vengeance and satisfying his own desire to seek some justice against faceless people on a Confederate man of war out along the coast. There's one more little passage I want to read to you. In fact, it's really just a sentence, and it doesn't come from this newspaper interview. It comes from another interview, even closer to his death. It's a biographical sketch of his life and service, and in it, it reveals a piece of advice that Saxton liked to share, which I think is related to what he just talked about, what I just shared with you. He says, comma, to the young, he would say that forgetfulness of self should be the guiding principle of life. I had to think about that a little bit. Forgetfulness of self should be the guiding principle of life. So when you put other things ahead of yourself, that should be the way that you approach your life. So there it is, some words of wisdom from Rufus Saxton, U.S. Army, Union Civil War General. Thanks for listening. See you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.